my son has recently gotten to a game called Fallout 76, which is a post-apocalyptic war. This is an emblem of one of the factions called the Brotherhood of Steel. Unfortunately, I did the primer and the paint in two different companies, and you can see little bits of flaws in the paint from where the paint just didn't adhere right to itself, to, to the other brand. I figured this wasn't gonna be that big of a deal anyway, because the video game's post-apocalyptic, and this makes it look kind of old and rugged anyway with those little flaws in it. Every video I do, I'd like to try and make some type of improvement to my casting or to try and make it better. I have lots of suggestions and things I'd like to do. Um, right here, I'm just quickly putting together a temperature thermal couple holder so that way I can hook a reader to it. And I'd like to start looking at the temperature inside my aluminum melt to see where it is I'm supposed to pour. So there it is. You can see it's done. It has the reader. It has the probe. And yeah, it looks like a fishing rod or something. So anyway, here I am testing it. Looks like I got about 89 and a half degrees on the handheld um, thermometer. So when I look, zoom in on the other one, it's about 88. So that looks like it's reading well. Here I'm gonna try some ice water with infrared thermometer. Reads about 32, 32 and a half, whatever. Kind of fluctuates around there, which would be acceptable with ice in the water. Uh, so now when I try it with the probe in the water, I'm kind of hitting around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So I don't know, the thermocouple is kind of there, kind of not. So I'll just use it as a reference point instead of something that's absolutely dead on when I use it. I'm pretty low tech when it comes to mulling the sand. I just use a beater that I picked up at a thrift store and a drill. The plus side on that is it works. I saw another YouTuber use it and I tried a paint mixer and the paint mixer just doesn't work as well. But when I'm done mulling it, it uh, has to stay together like that and then crumble apart. Seems really good. I love the Petrobon that I got, and it's 190 mesh. Works really well. One of the suggestions that was given to me by a YouTuber that also makes castings, I was told to paint the board. I haven't got around to paint it yet, but it makes obvious sense that if you paint the board, it'll keep the oils from soaking out of your Petrobon into it and keep your Petrobon more stable around where it touches the board. So... I still want to do that, and I'll probably get that done a little later on. Now I'm just uh, putting facing sand on the pattern. You just go ahead and strain it the best you can and get the smallest particles on it and give it gentle pats with your hand to get it securely packed all the way around your pattern in the crevices for the best detail you can. After you get that done, you can pretty much just fill it up with the sand the rest of the way without filtering it. I like using a sheet of metal because I can actually just scrape off the top and it stays on top and I can put it back in my bucket and reuse it without having to scrape it off the board. That's a problem. I hate it when the pattern falls out. I'm going to have to use a backing board so that way when I turn it over, um, the pattern stays in. I risked totally ruining the cavity by putting that pattern back in. Um, I mean, it was just it was just luck that it didn't end up ruining it. and just putting more parting powder on there so that way the two halves don't stick together. Now I'm gonna put the sprue and spin trap in. Some people don't use it, some people do. I think it helps because it seems like if you had any contaminants go down in your mold when you poured your aluminum, it would seem to go by into your spin trap more than just go straight into your pattern. So hopefully it works. Maybe I'm wasting my time, maybe I'm not. It seems to work, I'm happy with it. So I'll just continue using it. Now I'm making a basin. The basin not only helps me pour the aluminum into a larger space, but I also think it makes it an even flow down into the sprue. The sprue is tapered, and if you can get an even flow down in there, it won't pull air in and trap air with it and cause turbulence. So I think it's a good idea, and I think I'll keep on doing that. I'm 
I'm using a thin piece of metal folded over to cut the channels into the cope, which is the top half of the mold. After I cut it, I just go over it with my hands and kind of just mash it flat so there's no edges to fall into the casting. One of the best recommendations that was given to me is use an air compressor to blow off the remaining sand, and my castings have improved because of that. Whenever you leave sand in the mold or it gets in the mold, it causes occlusions and you have these little tiny pits from the sand particles interfering with your aluminum flowing smooth into it and hardening. There I'm just going ahead and poking the air holes with an eighth inch TIG rod. I kind of wiggle it around in there and widen the holes. I used to put the holes directly on top of the pattern um, where the pattern is in the mold and the sand would fall out when I'm casting. This keeps it from falling down the hole into the pattern while the aluminum's filling up. A lot cleaner cast. Well, here we go. This is exactly what happens when you don't do something for a while. You forget what you're doing and what you should be doing. And I finally look over and realize I have no air going into the forge. So now that I open it up, it starts up and gets going. Now I have my new pouring tongs. I don't know if you can call them tongs, but it's a pouring ring, I guess. And it has a little slider on it so that way it catches the top of the crucible so I can really turn it upside down even if I wanted to and the crucible is not going to fall out. I've hated the tongs that I had before and how I used them and I never really wanted to do that. But I also did want to rush into another situation and get another pair of tongs that I hate too. So I finally got something I like. Now I'm just going to skin the dross off the top and get it ready to take the temperature of and see what temperature I'm going to be pouring at. And like I said, I'm not quite sure about my thermal couples. I just know it gives me like around what I'm doing. So I just need more experience with it and try different temperatures. Stick it in the molten aluminum. I'm reading about, I think it was 1,520 degrees. And I think I should be pouring around 1,300 to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, for what the internet says so I don't know I feel like it's a little too high but what am I supposed to do because I'm not quite sure with that how true the reading is of the thermal couple so I decided to go ahead and try it anyway and like I said I'll just work at different temperature ranges and see what that works good for me I went ahead and took the temperature again. I wanted to see if it dropped a little bit, but I think the thermal mass of that crucible and the molten aluminum inside of it uh, doesn't dissipate heat very readily. I thought it would go quicker, but it really doesn't. The other thing I was worried about is I couldn't remember if I touched the side of the crucible or not when I put the thermal couple in there. So I wanted to make sure I was getting the true temperature of the molten aluminum and not, not the side of the crucible. I said I made these uh, this new pouring ring and man it's a hundred times better than those stupid tongs I had it's not like I wanted to use the tongs it's just I didn't want to just rush and jump into something that wasn't very good or any better than what I already had I'm not sure if it helps to extend the life of my crucible but I always stick it back into the forge when the forge is off and just let everything cool down slowly and that way it doesn't cool down quick and add tension to it or something like that. When things cool slowly, they tend to have a lot less tension in, in the structure of it. 
I let the mold sit for about an hour. I was just curious as to what the temperature was. It looks like the sand's about 133 degrees Fahrenheit, and it looks like that little piece of aluminum sticking out for the pouring basin is about 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget to help me build my channel. Remember to like and subscribe. The casting turned out really well as for sand not causing any pitting or there was loose sand in there. And it looks pretty shiny and the surface is pretty smooth, but when you look at it closer, there's a, a little surface issue with it. And I'm not sure if it was because I poured it too hot or maybe I had too much baby powder on it and it got into the sand and when the aluminum came in there and burned the baby powder, it did something to the surface finish. So anyway, I think I have some things to try and figure out to make the surface better. I've had better surface on a few other castings, and I wish I could repeat that again. Anyway, I'm still, I'm still happy with it because there, there is no loose sand that was doing any pitting. So as long as I can figure out how to get the surface finish just slightly better, I think I'm on part of making some pretty good castings. Cutting off the spin trap and the sprue and the gate. Now, just as always, I go ahead and use my belt sander to clean up anything on the casting that I don't want. This time I tried a Dremel with the wire brush. I really wasn't impressed. I did some more by steel wool and I buffed it out. Here you can see where the paint just really was incompatible with the two companies. The primer and the top coat weren't the same companies and it wrecked it. So, but like I said, it's for a post-apocalyptic video game anyway. So I'm like, yeah, that'll look cool. I'll give it some ruggedness and you can see it transferred right through. So it's pretty amazing that 190 mesh um, Petrobon transfers detail really well. I think the casting turned out really well. I wish the surface finish had turned out better so I wouldn't have to work on it so much to get it shiny. But again, it looks pretty good and I'm happy with it. Don't forget to like and subscribe my videos. Thanks again.